Good afternoon on this Wednesday, August 1st, and we are starting off the month of August with a bang here in the tropics as we now have newly classified Tropical Depression 5 as of the latest 5 p.m. Eastern Time Advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Advisory 1 indicates that TD5 is packing maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour. It's moving off toward the west-northwest at 18 miles per hour, and tropical storm watches are in effect for much of the Lesser Antilles where they are anticipating a landfall at roughly 2 p.m. Friday and we can see the five-day forecast track continues to take the storm on a general west-northwest heading and finally arriving near Jamaica by around 2 p.m. Monday as a 75 mile per hour category 1 hurricane. The latest spaghetti model tracks are showing a very good agreement here between the models with a track into the central and northwest Caribbean and possibly ending up in the southeast Gulf of Mexico within five to seven days but we're going to talk more about the latest dynamical model guidance in just a moment. But for now, we're going to take more of an in-depth look at the storm itself, and you can see the reason why the Hurricane Center elected to upgrade the system to a depression, as we've got a well-defined center of circulation. Now, the system still isn't very well-defined because we've got some westerly wind shear, and that is preventing the system from developing convection, especially in the northwest quadrant, and the center of circulation is partially exposed, with the best convection occurring just to the south of the center. And you can see the tropical depression as we begin to take more of a regional view. And here it is just to the east of the Caribbean islands. And as we turn to the latest enhanced infrared, you can see that there was a very nice convective burst a few hours ago. And it is now beginning to weaken some. But this is a normal process with developing tropical depressions and storms. You will see several hours of convective bursting followed by a decrease for a few more hours. So this is definitely something that is to be expected for the next couple of days. Now as we turn to the water vapor, you can see why we do not expect this depression to become much more than a tropical storm before entering the eastern Caribbean. And that is because we've got this large and powerful upper level low located just to the north of Tropical Depression 5. And we also have this tropical upper tropospheric trough that's draped all the way into the northeast Caribbean. And this is the main feature that is responsible for the westerly wind shear that is helping to chop off the northern section of TD5 and conditions are not going to become much more favorable for the next couple of days. Now as the system begins to move into the central and western Caribbean, some other features are going to be equally as important. More specifically, we have a second upper level low situated near Bermuda, and we've got a third upper level low that is currently over the western Cuban region, and that being the Isle of Youth here. And if this pattern were to remain nearly stationary for the next several days, this is going to help continue promoting little in the way of vertical wind shear to the south of Hispaniola. So if TD5 can miss some of the higher terrain of the northern Caribbean, conditions may just become very favorable here for more steady intensification. That is, of course, unless this upper level low moves more toward the south, and then the whole entire wind shear pattern could change. You can see this being denoted by the latest streamline analysis from the University of Wisconsin. We've got this narrow pocket of favorable upper level ridging located directly above the tropical depression as of right now with all of the westerly vertical wind shear being located just to the west and toward the north. But as we take a more regional view, we've got this upper level low swirling about here near Bermuda, and this is helping to promote upper level ridging to the south, along with the help of this second and third upper level low over the northwest Caribbean. So if this pattern were to remain status quo as this system begins to move back underneath Hispaniola, then conditions could become very favorable for more development. The latest color representation of this graphic also shows the wind shear values rather nicely. Anything that is in blue or dark blue denotes areas that are very favorable, at least in terms of the vertical shear. And down here toward the south of Hispaniola and Jamaica, the wind shear values are roughly 5 to 10 knots or less. So it's just a matter of how well Tropical Depression 5 can battle through this shear and make it into this region, and whether or not the favorable conditions will still exist by the time this system moves into that area. Of course, nothing is edged into stone in terms of the forecast track of this system, and that is to be expected any time you're trying to forecast a tropical cyclone five to seven days into the future. So we are going to be very closely monitoring the guidance that comes out roughly every six to 12 hours. And one wrench in the forecast track is the CMC forecast. And if you recall yesterday, the CMC was taking the system into the southern Bahamas by day six, and the latest 12Z run has not backed off from that thinking. As you can see, it's still placing the system in the southern Bahamas by that time. But also, more interestingly, if it wasn't for this forecast track, 
And as you can see here, it's moving across the rugged terrain of Hispaniola. The CMC would likely be showing a much stronger system, probably a moderate to strong end hurricane by this time if it wasn't for all of that land interaction. Now why am I saying this? Well, if you go ahead and observe the latest 200 to 850 millibar vertical shear forecast from this CMC, we see that initially it is correctly showing the lack of vertical wind shear across the central Caribbean and we've got an upper level low as we saw on the water vapor just to the west of central Cuba and we've got another upper level low near Bermuda. Now as we set the forecast into motion however you will see that not much in the way of changes forecast over the next several days and it's keeping the central Caribbean rather favorable and it looks as though it's got an upper level ridge moving westward into the Caribbean along with our system and as we advance this into days five and six we still have very favorable conditions being progged near Jamaica and keep in mind this is where the official forecast track has the storm moving at around five days into the future so this is a problematic forecast at least in terms of the vertical wind shear if in fact the storm were to take that more southerly route so the big question then becomes will it indeed stay south of the greater Antilles that being Hispaniola Puerto Rico and eastern Cuba well, we cannot say that with any degree of certainty just yet, but we can at least see the reason why the CMC is taking the storm a little bit more toward the north. As we take a look at the mid-level steering forecast at 500 millibars, we see that the upper level low situated to the south of Bermuda is forecast to at least temporarily dip more toward the southwest in this run, and that is just enough reason to lure the system more toward the north into the West Atlantic. However, if we go ahead and look at the GFS at the same 500 millibar steering layer, we see that the GFS is taking a slightly different approach. And as we go into 18 and 24 hours, there you can see the upper level low south of Bermuda. But unlike the CMC, it is not showing any dip toward the southwest. Instead, it's showing the upper level low gradually weakening or being picked up by a larger trough exiting the eastern seaboard and thus moving away from the system in general and, if anything, more toward the north. And then finally, by the time we get into days four and five, the tropical system in the Caribbean is strengthening to the point to where you can even see it in the mid-levels. So that is the reason why it suddenly appears to the south of Hispaniola. And as we transition to the latest vertical shear forecast from the GFS, with that upper level low remaining well to the north and the upper level low over Cuba remaining well to the west of the system, we continue to see this favorable ridge being outlined across the central Caribbean. And this forecast shows that ridge persisting throughout the forecast period with more upper level ridging spreading into the East Caribbean over top the tropical system. So that is the reason why the GFS, much like the Hurricane Center, is promoting a gradual intensification into a minimal hurricane by the time the system moves into the Northwest Caribbean. And finally, as we go into days seven and eight, this continues to look like a very favorable upper level ridge moving about through the Yucatan Channel along with our developing tropical cyclone. The third and final model that we are going to closely analyze this afternoon is the ECMWF. And the ECMWF definitely deserves some recognition as being one of the best models for hurricane forecasting over the past several years. So as we go ahead and observe the latest forecast from the European, it shows the system closing in near the Lesser Antilles and especially Barbados by early Friday morning. And as we move into Saturday, it's just to the south of Puerto Rico. By Sunday, it is sitting just to the south of Haiti, and they certainly don't need any heavy rainfall as they are still recovering from the earthquake a couple of years ago. But the good news is that the European model is not showing nearly as much strengthening in the Caribbean as the GFS, so apparently the vertical wind shear forecast being shown in this model is not quite as favorable. And in fact, we're dealing with nothing more than a tropical depression or a tropical wave here just to the west of Jamaica by Monday. But even if this were to be the case and the shear conditions were not as good in the Caribbean as expected, this system would still have to be watched as it begins to move near the Yucatan Peninsula because finally as we go into days 8 through 10, it shows at least some development into a tropical depression or tropical storm before making landfall across southern Texas. So there are still definitely a lot of questions that will have to be answered over the next week or so, but the key ingredients to whether or not this system becomes a major threat down the road in the Northwest Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico is if these upper level lows keep a safe distance away from the tropical system and whether it avoids some of the higher terrain of the Greater Antilles, most notably Hispaniola because that is where some of the most rugged terrain in the Caribbean is located. So thank you for following 28storms.com updates. We're going to be providing more blog videos and discussions at 28storms.com. 
you can find those near the top. And if you would like to check out a lot of the analysis products that we oftentimes use on the video, you can check those out at 28storms.com slash hurricane, and all of those links are provided on the page. And finally, for more rapid updates, you can also check us out at Facebook and Twitter. And if you're on the go, you can check out more videos like the one that you just watched at the Hurricane Tracker app. You can download those if you've got an iPhone or iPad.